Um, did I tell you that I called the Board of Elections? They're sending you an absentee ballot. Absentee ballot? For what? So you can vote. Vote. On November 3rd, you want to vote for our next president, don't you? Wouldn't want to miss that. Probably the most excitement I have all year. Okay, it has to be in by October 27th. The application has to be in. They'll mail you the ballot, and then you can send that in by election day, or I can just take you to the polls. They have wheelchair access. Whatever. Hi, Edith. Hi, Miss Cooper. Oh, hi, Mallet. How are you feeling this morning? I was fine until you showed up. Oh, a nice hot breakfast. That's just what you I need. I can make my own breakfast. Oh, look. I picked I up can your... open my own mail, too. She's driving me nuts! Um, I know that the therapy is going kind of slow. Oh, am I talking too loud? The therapy is fine. The harder I work, the sooner I'm out of this prison on wheels. It's everything else, picking up my socks, taking the paper, my mail. She's hovering, always hovering. No, but that, that's why the department hired her, so that she could take care of you when I wasn't here. Take care of me while you're not here? I don't need a babysitter, Harley. I, can, I don't need anybody, okay? Well, what about me? Stop, just stop it. Okay, I, I have to get ready for work. I should warn you he's in a foul mood today. They gotta be kidding me! What the hell is this? Hi. Did you find out who stole those company documents? Well, well I guess I know who didn't read her morning newspaper. Well, I haven't had a chance to... Nick McHenry, I don't believe it. Well, believe it. They caught him red-handed going through customs with the stuff in his bag. But why would Nick do something like that? It doesn't make sense. I don't know. Nothing makes any sense to me anymore. I mean, people just do exactly what they please. No thought to the havoc it causes in other people's lives. This is all right for them. If they get what they want, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. Are you talking about Nick McHenry or about the fact that Nadine is pregnant? Time to take our baby vitamins. They're my baby vitamins, Nadine. I'm the one who's pregnant. Well, I just feel so close to this baby already. Sometimes I forget. Well, you certainly wouldn't forget if you had to look them around like I do. Why aren't you wearing this thing? Oh, I only wear this when I have to. It makes me look like I swallowed Cleveland. Oh, Nadine, thank you for reminding me about that. Honey, you're going to get your figure back as soon as you have the baby. All it takes is a little diet and exercise. I hate dieting. Well, it's simple. You just figure out the foods that you love to eat, and then you stop eating them. I just wish I could figure out how to get my life in shape as easily. Nadine, Billy bought the pregnancy story. He's not divorcing you. What is your problem? The same thing that's always been my problem, Vanessa. I still haven't heard how she reacted when Billy told her we're staying together. She might try and steal him back. I wouldn't put it past her, you know. Oh, come on. She really wouldn't do that, would she? I mean, after all, you are expecting his pillow. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs>
have been looking all over for you. Have you seen this? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's ridiculous. Why would Nick McHenry steal falling documents? I mean, I think there's something fishy going on, don't you? Hey, what's the matter? Is it bad news or something, Eve? No, no, it's not bad news at all. It's oh. uh, the letter from my husband, that's all. Oh, oh, from Cambrai. No, he's actually in Paris. He ran into Nick over there, and he was just trying to get some funds for his resistance. Oh, was there trouble? No, why would there be trouble? The two of them are best of friends. Yes, but you told me that you had um, told Paul about your feelings. That's him. right, yeah. Well, he knew it when he married me. Oh, he must love you so much. Yep. Enough to let me go. What? Nick told him that he and Mindy were broken up, so this is basically saying that he's willing to dissolve the marriage, and I have no longer an obligation to him. What are you going to do? I'm going to do nothing. I hate to say this, but isn't this your chance to get together with, um... <laughs> no, it's going to take a little bit more than a letter of permission from Paul. I don't think Nick gives a damn about me, frankly. I don't believe that. Well, it's true. The only reason he paid any attention to me at all was because Paul told him to keep an eye on me when I came back to the States. He doesn't give a damn about me. I'm an obligation to him. Look, I don't even want to talk about Nick anymore. I'm tired of it. And I'm worried about Paul. I don't know what the hell is happening to him. I mean, it sounds like something is wrong, but I don't know what it is. Poor Paul, you know, it's always the ones who have so much love to give that always end up getting hurt in the end. It doesn't always have to be that way. So how is it with you and Ed? Well, he cares about me. I mean, I know that. Keep up, people. Keep up. Now, obviously, the first step is to take a complete medical history before you do any diagnosis. In here. Well, he obviously, um... Can't throw his arm around me in public. Just be careful, okay? Well, I am certainly not thrilled that Nadine is pregnant. Imagine the luck. Boy, that woman certainly makes up in hormones what she lacks in brains. Yeah, you know, well, I wish she'd lend some of those hormones to me. It's not fair, is it? No. You're still trying, though, aren't you? Well, yeah, sort of. How do you sort of try to have a baby? <laughs> well, I'm interested, but Ed sort of isn't, at least not recently. Things are all right between you two, aren't oh, they? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're fine. It's just he's been really tired. I don't know, it could be a nurse's strike or the annual budget crisis at Cedars. Who knows? Yeah. Well, there have been a lot of cutbacks recently. I'm sure he's very worried about all of that. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. I haven't seen him this tense in a really long time. You know, the other day he actually played hooky from work and went up to the cabin by himself for the afternoon? I mean, didn't even tell me. He just left. But that's nice. I mean, it's nice for him. You're not worried about that, are you? Oh, no, no. I mean, I understand. Oh, each of us deals with stress in our own way. I have a closet full of dresses with sale tags still on them <laughs> to prove it. And, and you usually pick away at your nail polish. Me. So? Well, it's just Bill, you know, I, uh... Well, no matter what I say or do, he's always hoping that Billy and I'll get back together again. And now that Nadine is pregnant, I just really dread telling him. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mrs. Bauer. Hi, Hi sweetie. What are you doing here? We well, forgot to sign the snow name to go on the field trip this afternoon. Remember? The frog hunt? <laughs> oh, yeah. The frog hunt. How could I forget that? A lot of kids going? Yeah. A lot of parents are going, too. That's nice. Together, you know, like a family outing. I was wondering if you and Dad could go with me. Billy, here, let me help you with this. Well, you're right there. I got it. Here, I'm really Thanks. clumsy. Okay. Uh, here. Ow. In my head. Uh, Nadine. Yes, honey, I'm just uh, taking my prenatal vitamin. Oh, Billy, you shouldn't have. Yeah, well, the lady in the baby store really loves me. All yeah. those are for the baby? Uh, no, there, there's one here for you. It's uh, 
I have a big blue one, I think. Is it yeah, this one? Yeah, yeah. Give that to oh, her. Oh, here you go. Oh, okay. Billy, uh, you shook it. Billy. Slip that right around your neck. Oh, this is awfully big for a jewelry box. Oh, darling, jewelry, come on. You can't have jewelry when you have a baby. They be pulling at it all the time. Yeah, boy, let me tell you. One time, my little brother, when he was a baby, I had these big, huge hoop earrings on, and he almost ripped my earlobe off. <gasps> what is it? Oh, look, it's one of those cute little things put around your neck and to hold the baby. Didn't these go out in the 60s? Oh, 19. Kenny and I can't wait to see you wearing this. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, a stroller out here, oh. too. It's state of the art. Well, our baby certainly is lucky to have a wonderful daddy like you. Yeah. Now, look at this. Isn't that cute? Uh, Billy, I, I need to talk. <sighs> <gasps> Would you look at this? Look at the little bunnies on this. Oh, oh this is precious. Yeah, Billy. Hey, Billy, did you get t-shirts? You know, this kid's going to do Oh, yeah, I got t-shirts. They're right in here. Uh, Bridget, why don't you look for the t-shirts and let me talk to my husband, all right? So you, you don't seem very interested in the stuff I bought for the baby. Uh, yeah, I'm interested. I'm just tired, that's all. I didn't sleep very well. Why, why not? Well, it's not easy sleeping with a baby inside of you. Hey, did the baby start kicking already? Look, I don't want to talk about the... about our baby just now. Did you tell Vanessa th that we're staying together? Yeah, I told her I wasn't going through with the divorce. Well, how did she take it? She accepted my decision. But what did she say? Hey, look at this. Look at this cute little football outfit. Oh. Oh, he is just going to love this. Hey, that's even got my old number right there. Later. Billy, what really? did Vanessa say? I just told you. Did she try saying. and talk you into going back with No, me? she didn't. That's all in the past. Okay. 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 Now, the baby started kicking, huh? What? I said the baby started kicking, but let me feel. They gotta be kidding me. This is known as highway robbery. What's he going on about? Um, this is the bill from Cedars. It's what his insurance look, did. Look, look at my TV. 25 bucks a day for TV. I know. You did watch it, though. I watched it. I couldn't hear it, Harley. Look how much you want for a phone call. It's cheaper to call from a space shuttle. Okay, okay, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Oh, look. Here, Look, I'm not police. blind, all right? From I get police. my own mail. About time the department sent me my paycheck. Listen, I am taking you on for the finest dinner once Attila here lets me go. <laughs> you don't have to do that, honey. What is this? This isn't what I make. This isn't enough. On disability. Oh, I get it. Half a cop, half the pay. Is that how it works? Honey, it's not that much less. It's only about my half of the sh my share of the rent here. That's it, Harley. I've had it. We are moving back to the garage apartment. So it is a lot cheaper. Yeah, but you cannot get up and down the stairs. I'll crawl up those stairs. I don't care. Okay, we'll manage. We'll manage. We'll just, we'll talk about this later. Talk about it later? Am I, am I boring you? No, no. I just, I don't want to be late for work. Work, of course. Yeah, work. Someone's got to pay the bills. Mallet, you pay your share. I'm always going to pay my share, Harley. I don't care. I'm always going to pay my share. Are we going to start this damn therapy or what? Okay. Let me just get this out of the way here. Oh. Leave that. I can take it. No, I'll Let take go it. of the tray, Edith. Look. Edith, let go of the tray. <laughs> That's what I was afraid. That is it. You are fired. Okay, okay. I'm I don't care. I've it. had it. You yeah. are out of here now. Honey, I'd love to go on that field trip with you, and I'm sure your daddy would too, but you know, this is a working day for both of us. Dad would go if you asked him. Well, I can't go because I've got too much to do with Alexander gone. People who love each other ought to be together, don't you think? Yeah, I do, in an ideal world, but you know, sometimes those people have problems that other people don't know about. You understand about this. You and I have talked about this. Dad doesn't talk about it much, but I know he's been really lonely since Mindy left. Why don't we invite him over for dinner one night? I don't think that's a good idea. Well, yes, it is. I know you and Fletcher aren't getting married. He's not hanging around anymore. We can be together now, like a real family. You and Dad can get married again. Um, I think I'm going to finish these up in my office. Okay. Come, sit down. I want to have a good talk with you, okay? Now, 
You know that Fletcher and I aren't going to be getting married, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your father and I will be getting back together again. Why not? I know you still love Dad, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, would you marry him if he asked you to? Honey, that's not going to happen. Why not? If you still love each other. Well, sometimes things change, and they change in ways that you don't expect. Like what? Your father's decided to go back to Nadine. No, he's, he's divorcing her. No, he's changed his mind. He had to. He can't go back with her. He doesn't love her. He loves you. I really don't. Well, can't I feel the baby? Um, well, because it's sleeping. How could you tell? Uh, well, a mother just knows. And if you start poking around, you might wake him up. Darling, I'll be gentle. I've done it before. Billy, please. I, I hardly slept a wink last night with this little darling kicking at my kidneys. Hey, maybe he's going to be a football field goal kicker. Hey, you going to play football like your daddy? Uh, Billy, please don't. Did you ever talk to Harley or Frank while they were inside? Well, I don't know what good that would have done. They never listened to me anyway. Hey, no, no, no. Now, they say if you talk to the baby before he's born, that he'll recognize your voice after he's born. Really? You mean if a mother talks to its baby before he's even born, then, then he's going to know who she is? Maybe. Oh, wow. Well, I don't believe that. My doctor never said anything like that. Hey, oh, that reminds me, you got a doctor's appointment this morning. Oh, that's right. Bridget, you and I better get going. Oh, Bridget doesn't have to take you. I'll take you. You? Yeah. Me. The daddy. The other hand, responsibilities. Besides, I want to talk to you, doctor. I think today will be a good day. I'm here on Channel 10. Let me speak to him for just a minute, okay? Good luck. That's one stubborn man you got there. I know. She's out of here, Harley. Listen, Mel. Look, I am sick and tired of her fussing over me. Okay, okay. I understand what you're going through. Harley, no, you don't. I understand that you want to be self-sufficient, okay? But you have to understand that there are certain things that you cannot do by yourself, okay? Certain things? I, let's find out what I can and cannot do, okay? What about therapy? She, therapy's fine. She can come here for therapy. She works on me, but then I want her out of here. What about the phone? What about when the doorbell rings? The phone has a light on it. You don't always see that light. And it's not, you can't hear the ring. Harley, if I don't see the phone, I don't answer it. What about me? I would feel much better knowing that you were here with someone. Harley, I can take care of myself. Now, she is gone. Final. I have to go to work, okay? I'll see you later. Dr. Guthrie, did you uh, finish the breakdown for the new equipment that you ordered? Yeah, I'm almost finished. I'm under the gun to get my financial statement into the boards. Go ahead. I'd be happy to help you with your budget if you need some. No, I can... Okay, thank you. Um, if you could come to my office later. Okay. Dad wouldn't go back with her. He wouldn't. He already has. You shouldn't have let him. I... I'm sorry. It's just that legal needs these signed by noon. No, that's okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's just take a minute. Water. I got it. You told him. Yes. Well, that is, I told him that Billy's going back to Nadine. I didn't tell him why. Maybe you should wait on that. No, I don't think so. I wasn't really honest with him about Fletcher and me, and you know what happened. I, I don't want that to happen again. Poor Bill. He's been through a lot lately, hasn't he? He certainly has. 
It's just children. They have this innocent belief in the power of love, that, that love can conquer anything. It can. Not always. Is it because of me? Is it because of something I did? Is that why you and Dad aren't getting back together? Is Dad mad at me for running away? Oh, honey, no. He's not mad at you. He loves you. Well, he said he loved you, but he went back with Nadine. I know, but that's very different. You see, he has responsibilities to Nadine. What responsibilities? Family responsibilities. What family? They don't have any kids. No, they don't, but they're going to. What do you mean? I mean that Nadine is expecting a baby. A baby? Yes. <laughs> a new little brother or a sister for you. That might be nice, don't you think? And that's why Dad's going back to Nadine, because she's having a baby? Yes. You know your father. You know how he feels about his children, how protective he is. Well, what about me? I'm his son. Why doesn't he come back to you then? Honey, it's very different. You're a great deal older. He's going to forget all about me now. No, he's not. He's having a new kid. So what does he need me for? He doesn't need you. He loves you. He adores you. He loves all his children. You know that. You just, you just said he missed Mindy and... Well, he's having the, Dylan work with him. It's, he's going to forget all about us when this new baby arrives. Just like what happened to Tommy Atkins when his mom had a new baby. She forgot all about him. He even had to make his own lunch for a while. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, a baby can't make his own lunch. A baby can't take care of himself the way you and I can take care of ourselves. You know... You know, your daddy fed you when you were a baby. He did? Yep, sure did. Popped that bottle right in your mouth and walked you back and forth until you fell asleep singing all those horrible country western songs of his. Now, when you got a little older, he was the one who fed you that icky strained carrot stuff and he was the one you threw up all over. I did? Yeah, you ruined a lot of his shirts. And then when you took your first step, he was the one who was holding your hand. Because he said he wanted to make sure that you learned how to walk right. Tall and strong and proud. Just like a Lewis. And look at you. You're a wonderful boy. You learn well. And that's because your daddy was able to teach you the things that he thought were important. Not just how to walk, how to keep your feet on the ground. Don't you want that for this next little baby? Your little brother, your little sister? Don't you want your daddy to be able to take care of that baby the same way he took care of you when you were a baby and you needed him? Yeah, I guess so. Take this stroller upstairs and then I'll take you to the doctor's. You get your coat. Billy, you can't take me to the doctor's. Then why not? Well, because you'll miss work. Darn it, I own the company. I go in when I damn well please. <laughs> I'll take this up. I'll be down in a second. What am I going to do? Where are you going? I don't want to be a crown zero when the bomb hits, Nadine. Bridget, you can't run out on me now. He's gonna find out that you're not pregnant as soon as he talks to Dr. Day. Then we have to make sure that he doesn't. Do you think that all men are as excited about being fathers as Billy is? No, only the married ones, so don't get any ideas. Besides, we have a deal, remember? 
Yeah, sure, we have a deal for Dr. Day, unfortunately, isn't in on it. All right. And you know who Billy is going to tell when he finds out? Ed and Marie. Oh, we're dead. Okay, little mom. Let's go see the doctor. You're doing some fine work on the bombing case, Cooper. Thank you, sir. I just wish I could figure out a way to solve it. Yeah, well, trust your instincts. They've been right so far. You mean that? Definitely. Then release Nick McHenry, sir, because my instincts tell me he's not guilty. I can't do that, Cooper. Sir, I know he didn't do it. I know it. It's a frame-up. He's Alexander Spalling's son. That's a fact that the mayor is constantly reminding me of. Let me tell you, the feds are in on this one. Our hands are tied, all right? Just keep working on the bombing case. AC? Well, who else would call you up on this stupid contraption? Are you okay? Can't a guy call you up just to apologize for being an idiot? Only if you're the idiot. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, you know. I know. Are you okay? I'm doing my exercises. Look, I better get back to them. I love you. Ditto. See ya later. Harley. Hi, how's that teletype working out? Oh, it's great. But uh, I have some bad news for you. Yeah. Now it fired Edith. Oh, you're kidding. She was just going nuts having her fussing around him all the time. Oh, well, I know. We had a long talk yesterday. Really? What did he say? Well, I'm sure it was nothing more than he's already told you. He's just, he's frustrated and that's to be expected, you know. This is so hard for him because he's not used to having to depend on anybody but himself. It just kills him to have to ask for the smallest favor. He's such a proud guy, you know. I just wish I knew what to do for him, but nowadays everybody makes him so angry, even me. Especially me. Listen, I think I may have something that can help you out. Really? I was thinking about Mallet last night, and I came up with this. Now, I will trade you this if you get me in to see Nick once again. It's important. Well, uh, visiting hours aren't for another hour. Yeah, well, I know. Is this for real? I would have brought lunch, but it was too early, so I brought you coffee. Oh, thanks. Uh, it, it's better without lunch. We <clears throat> probably ought to get right to the point. Oh, before before we do that, um, I'd love to have you come to dinner at my place tonight. Lillian. Well, you know, Maureen is, is going to be working late, I'm sure, with Alexandra out of town and with all this business about Nick. I can't have dinner with you. Oh, why not? This is hard. Doesn't have to be hit. We've been friends such a long time. And you have stood by me through good times, you've stood by me through bad times. I can't imagine what I would be without you. Why do I get the feeling I'm about to get a gold watch? You mean everything to me. You mean a lot to me, too, Ed. I tried to tell you this the other night at the, uh, at the country club. What happened between us? We made love. Yes. And it can't happen again. Ever. Okay, just pull the car around. Well, what am I going to do? Out. 
What am I going to do? Well, since that little tale you told him about it being bad luck for the father to see the doctor, I, it didn't work. I mean, I don't know. What, I think we should just slip out the back door while we both still have our heads. Bridget, you're not helping. Here he comes. Oh, I wish I was still a virgin. Ready? <laughs> Ready. Show me now, kid. Lewis residence. Bridget, hi. Is Billy there? No, unfortunately, he just took Nadine to the doctor. Darn. What time will he be back? I don't know. Any time will be too soon for me. Hey, Aunt Maureen, um, I might be having to move back in with you soon. Would that be all right? Of course it's okay. We'd love to have you back. We miss you. Really? Even Uncle Ed? Yes. He's very proud of you, Bridget. We all are, for the way that you've turned your life around. So, I guess Nadine doesn't need you looking out for her now that Billy's moved back into the house. Well, he hasn't moved back in yet. I mean, I don't think he will. Um, Emery, I've really got to go right now, okay? I'll talk to you later. Got it. Billy, Nadine, wait! Brian. We're going to call for an ambulance. We've got an emergency in one of the cells. One of the prisoners is seriously ill. Well, I'm Dr. Guthrie. I work at Cedars. Great. Show me where to go. Who is it? Nick McKinley. Officer, wait a second. Grab the medical bag out of my car. Two-door baby blue. What's up? I hope it's not an emergency. Actually, it is kind of. The doctor's office called in. She had to cancel the appointment. Why? Oh, I think someone was having a baby or something. Oh, of course. It, the doctor warned me. She said that I, I should check before my appointments, double check ahead of time. <laughs> See what happens when you rush me, honey? I forget everything. Well, I guess there's nothing to be done, then. We'll just have to cancel the appointment. Yeah, I guess so. <sighs> well, just think, honey. One day, the doctor's going to be canceling all of her appointments for me. You know, Nadine, I, uh... I still don't feel too comfortable about not living at home. Billy, we've been through this. I don't want you here just because you feel obligated. It's my baby, too, Nadine. And what if something happens? Well, nothing is going to happen, at least not for a few months. And besides, Bridget is here. Look. Just as soon as we get our baby all tucked away safely in its crib upstairs, I promise you that I'm going to keep you in this house and throw away the key. I'm not going to take the chance of losing you again, Billy. Not ever again. I am really sorry I wasn't able to get a hold of Billy. No, that's okay. He's never there when you need him. That's not true. He's been a wonderful father to Bill. <sighs> Damn, Nadine. You, you know that Nadine fought like a tiger to get Billy back, right? She sure did. Used everything in her arsenal, including pregnancy. And Billy says that the reason that he's going back with her is because of the baby. Yeah, so? Then why isn't he living with her? He is. He moved in a couple of days ago. No, he didn't. I just called Nadine's house to try to find Billy, and Bridget answered, and she said that Billy isn't living there. Well, you must have heard what she said, Ron. Oh, no, that's what she said. Oh, well, that's very strange. Very strange. Damn it. I'm sorry. I think I found the answer to all of our problems. What, a leg transplant? No. Eve has a friend who has a friend who's the perfect babysitter for you. Harley, I thought I was the one with the hearing problem. I told you, I don't need a babysitter. Presenting Zyla the Wonder Dog. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, what the... <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Okay. Darling, I'd stay longer, but I, I got a 12.30 meeting. We'll go. Okay. Okay. You take care now. Take care of yourself. I will. <laughs> I got him. I knew my plan would work. Yeah, sure, thanks to me. What happens if I'm not there next time, Nadine, to save you? Well, I'll just think of something. Take the cake. Hey, uh, don't forget to tell me when you reschedule that appointment. I would like to talk to your doctor. Okay, I, I will. Hmm. Fine. That better be one large piece of cake, Nadine. Why wouldn't Billy be living with Nadine? Because she wants all the closet space? Uh-uh. Even including all her feathered pantsuits, there's still room for both of them in that house. Bridget said that the reason she hired her was because Nadine didn't want to be alone. Whose idea do you think it was that Billy not stay with her? <clears throat> what I did... <clears throat> what happened between us cannot happen again because I'm married and I have responsibilities to my wife and I have responsibilities to my daughter well I know that Ed I don't expect you to leave Maureen or, or your family I, but we're two adults I mean I just want to be with you I can't do that I can't sneak around behind Maureen's back I did that once before and too many people got hurt then tell me something, Ed. Why did you go to bed with me? Answering that wouldn't help either one of us. Well, I'm going to tell you if you won't tell me. I'm going to tell you why I went to bed with you. Yes, I am, damn it. Listen to me, Ed. I made love to you because I wanted to, because I have been thinking about it for so long. Believe me, I know how wrong it is. I know every single layer of how wrong it is. But I still wanted to do it. And I know, no matter what you say now, that you wanted to do it, too. And believe me, I don't understand why. I mean, I can't imagine why you would need me as much as I needed you. I mean, you have Maureen. But you did. Look, I, I don't regret this, you know? Because for the first time... In years, I feel whole, I feel like a woman, I feel alive again, and it's all thanks to you. All these things that you and Maureen take for granted, they mean the world to me, Ed. I haven't had them with a man for so long. Uh, you know, she gets to go to bed with you every night. She gets to wake up next to you every morning. If she's depressed, you're right there with a reassuring hug, with, with words. Uh, They may seem like little things, you know. But they are little things that mean the world to me. When I found out I had breast cancer, I thought, okay. I'm never going to go to bed with a man again. I'm never going to watch a sunset and drink coffee and laugh with him. I feel his skin next to mine and Touch him. But I beat this cancer. You know, I came back from that awful abyss and I vowed that I was going to make the most of this this wonderful too short miracle that we call life. And Ed, then this this happened with you. I'd do anything for it. I would risk anything. I, I'd live each day as it is. I wouldn't have any expectations. I want you. I can't do it. I can't do this to Maureen. I can't do it because I love her. Then, um, I guess there's just one thing I can do. I'm going to leave. You're going to leave? Yes. 
I quit. This has been Guiding Light. Fashion leather gloves by Founds.